Sing along. Trust me, there's nothing wrong. I just need to carry on, cause society's a myth. Put there to make you sit. Listen to what they give. Don't ask questions, shut your lid. Yeah, don't ask questions, shut your lid. I need to run away from this and go get off the grid. Feel like my brain is overloaded, man. I'm losing it. Don't let them tell you what to do, man. They don't know shit. In the pettiness, a reflection of the emptiness. Hilarious, you think you're worth my time? You're delirious, mysterious because you are behind a fake exterior. Inferior, you know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words, you can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last and to believe in what you got. It was built to last, yeah. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Gonna learn the consequence of being incompetent. Mental health is confidence. Dreams is a modestness. I'm not here to save the day. That's for you to take away. I could play a million mind games, but instead of say something. Logical, something that is topical. Rub it on and watch it go. Make yourself unstoppable. Dreams are irresponsible, but they're always possible. If you just believe you could be 
so remarkable. Thoughts in my head, a collage and they spread. I'll be great one day, going off of my meds. No, I'm not giving up, no, I'm not giving in. I will make it to the top, taking off in the wind. I gotta make it. I'm saving every day to taste it. I'm patient, but my mind, it can hardly take it. I'm chasing a dream that I've had for several ages. A bacon, modern kingdom for the taking. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow. Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. I'm back. It seems like a, lo a lifetime since I was last on here. But I've had a busy week. But I had my one grandson from the Tuesday. Last week I had my grandson from the Tuesday to the Thursday. Took him home. And on Friday I had my daughter come with her little boy, my other grandson. And they've just gone home today. That's why I've not been on since last, what, well, I believe, I think it was Tuesday I came on, but I came on very, only for about an hour and a half because my grandson was out. Anyway, it seems like a long time, well it is, it's a week isn't it, it's a week I haven't been online. Anyway, this, what we're talking, I'm looking at tonight is what I wanted to look at last week. But I couldn't do it because of everything going on. So I thought, no, before I move on to do anything else, I want to do this video. I want to do this live. I, and I know so much has come out since, but nothing, it's just a lot of uh, he said, she says information has come out. Right, and so I'm waiting more, I'm going to do this live tonight, but then I'm going to be waiting more until some concrete evidence comes out, concrete, right, about the DD, PDD case. So tonight we're looking at the former bodyguard, Gene Deal. And for months now, for months and months, he's been talking loud and clear and if anyone's going to you know what anything about Diddy it's going to be him because this guy worked with him in the 1990s he was with him when Tupac got shot he was with him when Biggie got shot you know what I mean he knows a lot so We've got a few little videos I want to show you and we want to discuss. Okay? So, let's get on with it. Hold on, let me just present it on the screen for you. Alright. Let's make sure you can see it. Right, that's it. I don't want that. Well, I will. But this is what I want. It's 10 minutes long, this one is. All right? And we're going to have a listen to it. Gene Deal, let's get right into it. Diddy, he got indicted. You called it, man. A few weeks ago, you was on the platform, and you said that he was going to get arrested in September. Yeah, man. Uh, any 
anybody who in law enforcement or people know the law, security ran up into his house. Uh, people will tell you, people knew that it was just a matter of time that they was going to indict him and bring him in uh, to see the judge, bro. It was just a matter of time. Uh, I just figured out with the grand jury and their different sessions and stuff like that. I'd just like to give a shout out to Dialogue, whose videos we are going to be using tonight. Because it's done a lot of, well, I think it might, I'm not sure if it's a lot of videos or individual videos, but there's a lot to Dialogue have done with this guy. So big shout out to him. The, his link to his page is on in the description. So please, if you like what you hear on these videos, go and join him. Go and subscribe to him. And then what uh, one of the uh, witnesses told me, I just figured it out that it was going to be around September that they were going to bring them in, bro. Um, this is, it's, people might not understand. It's difficult when you see a brother that has so much promise become an icon as far as in the music business and stuff that he did uh, to turn around and um, just tear his whole life down. But it's all because of his mentors and the people that trained him and taught him the music business. You know, it's all about the people who trained and taught him the music business because Puff wasn't, um, uh, uh, he wasn't born a monster. You know what I'm saying? He was made into a monster, brother. Do you understand what I'm saying? He was made into a monster from the stuff that happened to him, the things that he had to do. You understand? The things that he had to do to become who he is. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's like this, brother. You never like something so much that you can't do it out. And you never be willing to do anything to get where you want to be at. You got to have principles. You got to have morals. You got to keep with that stuff. And in that music business, a lot of that stuff get thrown out the window. You understand? And that's what happened to him. He started doing the things to other people that was done to him. To keep it frank, he was doing the things to other people that was done to him. And it is what it is. You got to know better. And if you know better, you will do better. When he was in New York City, he was like that gecko from the Geico commercial. Right, man. I said this a few weeks back. Right, about today. I said something to the world like, no, I don't understand how when he became a big star, a big celebrity, a big mu music in the music scene and all that lot, how he became this infatuated to having these freak off parties, to doing the D-R-U-G-S, to S-A women and maybe possible, we're not sure, children, right? And I'm thinking, that doesn't come with uh, fame, right? You don't seem to think, oh, well, I've got all this money now, I'm fame, I can do whatever I want, right? No one's going to touch me, I'm untouchable. And I, I also, this goes back further, and that is exactly what he's saying here, it goes back further. Then he turned and start uh, going, when he lived in Cali and Miami, he turned into Godzilla. I would see him talk about how he using drugs. He was never like that. Smoking cigarettes, smoking weed and everything like that. He turned into something that you could consider a monster, bro. Then he started doing things to people. You understand that he learned. That's a learned behavior, bro. Now, I'm not saying that he may have been doing a couple of things here and there with women, stuff like that in New York, but the things that they're talking about that he was doing, bringing in prostitutes to have sex with his girl and all that stuff like that, 
that was some crazy stuff to me, man. So I'm just looking at this whole thing, man. And um, you had asked me, and, and we don't have these conversations like most people do. We're going to go back and you're going to tell me what uh, uh, we're going to talk about this. You said, I'm going to ask you how you feel, bro. I don't want to, I don't want no man to ever go to jail Sorry. and be leaving their kids behind, be leaving their family behind. You understand? But some dudes belong in jail based on what they do and how they do it. We know that to be true. I am playing music in the background. It's so I can't get done for copyright. You have to alter the video somewhere. So by putting music over it as well, it's not loud, it's just there in the background. And I will be stopping like I do now, stopping the video every so often, just so that I don't get done for copyright. And it's just this situation, man. Um, when they get down to all the facts and all what happened, he may belong in jail, bro. And that's not my doing. That's not Cassie doing. That's his doing and his learned behavior from the people that mentored him. You got to really Realize, man, you got to, you, you, he learned from Andre Harrell. He learned from Russell Simmons. He learned from Clyde Davis. You understand? When those people are, 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 are telling you that they were in heavy into the drugs, they was heavy into beating women and doing things at that age, at, at that crazy stage, that's going to make him think that he could get away with the same thing that they was getting away with back then. You understand the things that he was saying, you know, the touchy filly between two men and all that stuff like that, man. All that's he learned that from them dudes. When I told y'all the story, when me and my man went up to Russell Simmons and he had house and he had a, 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 um, a man in bikini drawers in his bedroom, in his bed. You understand, bro? This is that he learned. I'm, I'm assuming he learned it from them. Let me put that. And I, I'm not going to say alleged because I saw that for my own self. My man was with me. Slick was with me. And we saw that for our own self. You understand what I'm saying? So these are behaviors and things that with drugs and all the stuff that's going on, pills, uh, uh, drinking, uh, it, make, it can make this man into a monster. And that's what it did, bro. It made him into a monster, bro. I personally feel like he got a lot of the things that he did from his mentor, and then he probably uh, 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 did it to the to the tenth power. You understand? Uh, Russell Simmons admitted that he was a drug abuser. You understand? Uh, Russell Simmons meet that he used to put his hands on women. So it's alert behavior, bro. Some of that stuff may be in him through his childhood. Through his childhood, he may have some of that things in him, but a lot of things that he was doing was a learned behavior, bro. You just don't, <laughs> you just don't just, just turn it in, in, in a matter of years, the way he was doing people, man. You understand? Check this out, bro. He led, Biggs to his death. He caused the rift between Wolf and BMF that led to Wolf death. Cuss Wolf mother out. Lied about owing him 300000 Because you had asked me how I feel. And, and, and I'm going to get into how I feel. Took a good friend of ours who raised money when he had the City College tragedy. A good friend of ours did things to make him popular in Harlem. Let him hang with us, be part of our crew the whole nine yards. Disrespected him and wouldn't help him. 
This is how I feel about him being locked up and going to jail. Some people, their karma is so strong for what they do and what they did. The stuff that he did to Craig Mack. You understand what I'm saying? The stuff that he did to Black Rob and all those people in the spiritual world right now. His karma was about to catch up. It was bound to catch up with him. You understand what I'm saying? His karma was bound to catch up with him, brother. So all these things that's going on right now, the learned behavior, what he got from these, these people who was not living spiritually correct, with their behaviors and the things that they've done. He go and transfer and do that to people with the fact of all these people that he's hurt, that always helped him and been on his side and been there for him. What's happening to him now is one of the greatest tragedies that we're going to ever read about, bro. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies that Shakespeare couldn't write in Richard. He couldn't write it in Macbeth. He couldn't write this shit in homie Romeo and Juliet. This is going to be one of the greatest tragedies of hip hop, along with Pac's death, along with Big's death. And he brought it on himself because he knew that he was wrong and he knew that he learned something that wasn't right. He no different from right and wrong, bro. You have a you have a way to, to, to change. You know when something is right and when something is wrong. And you know if you're wrong, you get help. He didn't choose none of that, bro. He chose to be who he is. And now he gonna learn. It ain't no fun when the rabbit got the gun. Right, that's it, ain't that? Right? So, it's true, I think what he's saying there is true. He's, what is he's, he's growing up in the music, music business, right? And I was actually talking about comparing his case, the other night, to the Mendez, 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 Menendez brothers and their father. Their father was in the music business, right? In the 1990s. The same era as Diddy. Right? Anyway, so, get off that case. Talking about that on Thursday. So, as I said, that, that I believe in there because I don't think it was just like, oh, well, I'm this big superstar, celebrity, I've got all this money, they can't touch me, I can do what I want. He grew up in that music business, right? He saw what was going on when he first came into the music business. He's seen all the D-I-U-G-S, he's seen the abuse being given, you know what I mean? And you think we'll stay there, and he's probably just thinking, oh, well, that's the, that's the in thing, well, that's, it. that's how it goes in the music business, you know what I mean? So we got growing up thinking, that's how it happens, I can do the same. But you see, over years, time, people change. People change. And what you might be able to get away with 20, 30, 40 years ago, you can't do no more. Anyway, I'm going to pull up some more videos. Right? Because they've been talking a lot. They've been talking a lot. Right? Uh, let's look.
Yeah. I just want to go to the the oldest one, the oldest one first, okay? Right. We're going to watch this one. It's not long, is it? Five minutes. This one's five minutes. So it's not long. No, I don't. Yep. No. I like club, that uh, club.
Rồi, nha em Sorry about that Years ago, and now I'm going back years and years um, My husband had to work Christmas do or something like that And he's working So we've got to get to this pub late So we got there about oh, 10 p.m. Quarter to 10, 10 p.m. Knowing then that the closing to last orders, as we say in the UK, was 10 30 p.m. So my husband went up to the bar and he got us both two rounds in each. Right? And I thought that's more than enough for me. I, I don't drink that much when I'm out anyway. And at one stage, we were standing at this table, like we have tables where you can just stand at. And then some seatings come up, seating, seats come up. So I got my two drinks, took it over to the table and sat down. Hold on, I've just got to sort my cats out. Right, so, and I sat down and I drank my first drink, finished that one off, and then I started, I took a sip of the second drink, and I thought, and I sat there, and I could, honest to God, within just a couple, like a couple of sips of the second drink, and I'm sitting there and the room is going, I thought, I've only had one drink, what did they have? And the room was starting to speak. Anyway, they called glass orders, and you know, you're never going to leave at half ten, you're going to leave about eleven, quarter past eleven, by the time you drank up. So everyone's gone up and got their last orders, right? And me and my husband decided to leave about quarter past eleven-ish. And he said, I've ordered a taxi. I said, okay. I said, okay, just go go to the toilet. And I've, I was feeling sick and everything. And I got out and went to the toilet. Dog, come out and when I sat, stood outside, waiting for this taxi and I was going to his I said, I don't feel right. I really don't feel right. And, you know, at the time I was trained in martial arts. I was training in my slot, so I knew how to defend myself. And this fight between his two lads, two guys, broke out literally in front of me. And I could not have moved. I could not move. I literally could not move. I couldn't have moved to save my life. Nothing. Right? Eventually, after waiting an hour or more for this flipping taxi, a taxi came. And my husband literally had to carry me into the house because I couldn't walk, could not walk. And he placed me on the sofa, put my feet up on the footstool I had, put a blanket over me and left me there because I couldn't walk. And I said to him the next day, I said, someone spiked my drink. I said, don't be I said, no, I said, I had two glasses, two glasses of white wine. I said the first one was fine, the second one tasted a bit funny. Right? I said, and then after a couple of, just a couple of sips, the room is starting to spin a bit. And I thought, no, it can't be, you know what I mean? I've only had one glass of wine so far, and a couple of sips of this glass. I said, and you seen how I was by the time I got in? I said, yeah, I had to literally, I had to carry you in. I said, exactly. Now, I've been out for drinks before, and I've been totally wrecked, wrecked. But I've managed to get in a taxi, I've managed to get out of the taxi, I've managed to walk up to my front door, get the key in the door, everything. But that one night, I couldn't. So, I think, because even, what's her name? Uh, that one woman who's come forward. Said he used to tell her to put l loads and loads of that body oil all over her. Loads. You don't need loads all over you. You'd be slipping and sliding like a flipping well oil. 
Well, you know what I mean? It's slipping and sliding everywhere. So, I think for a thousand bottles to be found of baby oil, and for them to take those thousand bottles, and each bottle has to be individually numbered, individually tested. So, you don't have a, like, when the defence get their paperwork off the prosecution, they're going to have sheets after sheets after sheets, just of the baby oil. Bottle one, tested. This come back. Bottle two, testing. This come back. You know what I mean? They have to give all that evidence over. So they're going to have all that paperwork to go through. And as Jean says, as the guy says, you don't take baby if it's nothing. Like, okay, there's a lot of baby oil. Right? But why would you take all the bottles of baby oil? Unless they tested one there and then and found some in it and then thought, right, we'll take the rest just to make sure. Because you wouldn't take it. They wouldn't. That's like overkill to me, a thousand bottles. You wouldn't take all that into evidence. Baby oil is baby oil unless it shows something different. And I think they did like a, what they do, on site test. Like a dipstick test or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. So, um, you did, they do that, and I think that's why they took them all back. Right. So that is weird. That was. Uh -huh. Right, um. Here's another one. This is about uh, Ashton Kutch Kutcher. Oh God, I'll just say. Oh God, I stop this. I can't stop it. Come on. Oh 
かなそれさえ、ナイフハジモンズ・スファイラス2011 And I've only just got him now in 2024 That's like 2 0 12 years 13 years later That's mad That's true. If they had information on PDD in 2011, why didn't they pull him in then? Why did they wait till now, where you've got all these victims coming forward? Civil cases, those are different cases to the home, Homeland Security, the FBI, different. Why?、Right? A lot of them might not even go to court. A lot of those cases might get settled out of court. Right? So it's true what it says. So. Right, where is it? Was. This is an interesting one. Now, I heard about this, but I've not heard it. I thought it just put it down to rumour.
I heard that that apparently a gold casket was ordered. Uh, I didn't hear months. I heard weeks. I heard about three weeks before she died. It was ordered about three weeks before she died. That's what I heard. He's saying months. So are we to believe this? I don't know. Right, it just could just be another goss, bit of gossip. Someone said it and it's been passed on to A, to B, to C, to D. You know what I mean? It's too late now to do a proper, a full, another autopsy on your body. It's been like, what, over 20 years? 1990 she died, 98, 99? Was it 2000? It's been over, it's 20 years. They won't be able to get anything from her body unless they got it from any hair that was left after, you know what I mean? So, it's, I think anyone, I'm, I'm, I'm sure he, we, he will have got extra security by now, because he's been talking, talking, talking. As you can see on the screen, there's Gene, Gene, Gene Deal explosives did this snaky ways inappropriate relationships did he was in and out of rehab or kept it no did he was heated when he saw a pic of what I man in jail right now we're going to listen to this one but I'm going to speed this one up just a little bit because it's like an hour Now this is by Cam Capone News. I'll put the link in the description so if anyone wants to go over and watch it and take notes themselves, please do. Uh, I can fast make this a bit faster now.
I think his lawyer made a big mistake by saying that, that Diddy was going to come out and take the stand. Because that's put a target on Diddy as well. Because people are going to think, oh my God, we've got to shut this guy up. You know what I mean? He cannot, he cannot take the stand. You know what I mean? Because he can say whatever he wants when he's on stand, on the stand. And people are going to be, whoa. So that's a target on his back already. By his lawyer saying that he's determined to come out and take the stand. Oh God, we've seen that, haven't we? Why just a two-pack case? Why not biggies? I thought they'd uh, charged and sent someone down for two-pack murder. So, wouldn't you be more interested, as well as two-pack, but just as much interested in finding out if you knew anything about biggie small?
Yeah, that's that woman who was assaulted by... Oh, I can't think of, remember her name now. Um, she was assaulted. She's, this is what she's allegedly saying. Allegedly, she was assaulted by PDD and a security guard, bodyguard. And she said she knew it wasn't G, right? It was someone called Big G. Now, she didn't say anything for years and years. Right? And then she found out last year there's a videotape of that assault. And she wanted, and he used to say, he, she contacted him, see so if he could get that tape. He couldn't because he didn't know or knew anything of that tape. But as I said in my other life, Big Joe may have seen that tape, right? But it may not be him in the video. Right? It may not be him in the video. And as Big Joe said at the time that that happened, he wasn't working for Diddy. Right? He said he saw Diddy at certain get togethers, like red carpet things. And you know when the security, the bodyguards all stand around talking and whatever, perhaps one of the bodyguards said, Oh, look, have you seen this? And showed him a video of the assault. We don't know if it's him, in it. We've only got her saying that it's him, in it. You know what I mean? But she's not seen the video, from what I understand. She's not seen it. She's only heard about it. So, I don't know if that's going to get any traction behind it.
Thank you. Right? Now, Epstein was supposed to be in on Suicide Watch. And someone else said on um, another YouTube channel said that being on um, Suicide Watch, you get nothing. You get no clothing, you get no bedding, you get nothing. Right? Because you can use anything to strap, uh, tie up a knot and uh, hook it round your neck and things like that. So they're not going to give you anything. They said, you don't want to be on suicide watch. You get nothing. Right? So, I know I'm going off this track a bit, but when you look at the photos of Epstein's son after he was found dead, there is uh, pieces of material all, all over the floor. Like this orange material. And I thought, hold on, I'm, I'm hearing that if you're on suicide watch, you don't get any clothing. So why is all this clothing around the floor? Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah.
Wow, can you know that? But it's right in what he's saying. They don't want to lose all these people that have stepped down. They don't want to lose their pension. So they probably stepped down with the knowledge that last girl received their pension and all that. Right? But if it comes out now, if someone says, oh, such and such a fire chief or police chief or whatever was involved, yes, it's going to tarnish the name. Right? It's not going to affect their pension. Right? Because they no longer work for that department. It'll just tarnish their name. Exactly, like what I've just said. <laughs> no.
right? I will not do a live on Usher or did L B or Justin Bieber because neither of them have come out and said this or that has happened to them. Neither of them. It's just alleged by celebrity talk. Right? They have not come out and said anything to the words, to, to the fact that, oh, did he did this and did he did that. They haven't said nothing like that. And to be honest with you, I'm not going to trash, put, drag someone through the ringer, right? Especially J- Justin Bieber, who's going through hell at the moment, as it is. He's got his own demons to deal with. He doesn't need to be dragged through anymore. So, until either them two, either us or Jay, Justin Bieber speak out, I will not talk, go out to a live on them, because I don't think it's fair. Yep, trauma. to the Bible oil. <laughs> Thank you. 
Exactly. Jay Z is. I've been taught. I've heard is worse than Diddy. In what he does, but Jay Z isn't out there put, putting out there in public. He isn't out there beating women in public, right? He isn't out there acting all crazy, right? Shooting at nightclubs and all that lot. He isn't out there doing any of that. He's he's on the low key. He keeps it very quiet, right? So I think Jay Z, they need they. Unless they get someone come forward and say Jay Z did this and Jay Z Jay Z did that, and uh, any civil cases come forward about Jay Z, I don't think they've got anything on him. You know what I mean? As a, as everyone said, all this started with Cassie, and then a little Rob come out. And then they did the raid on the houses by what was said in those two testimonies, right? In those two indictments that they made, that Cassie and Little Rob said. Those, the Home Security did those raids on, on that info. Yeah? So they are two big witnesses they need to protect. Right, and it's not going to be easy for little Rob to come out and sit there and that, on that stand and say this happened to him. He was giving a drink, and next minute he knows he's waking up with two two girls and digging a bed without him knowing or remembering anything. Right, it's possible. It is possible it could happen. Right? So, it's like that night with me. I think if I just sat there and drank that whole glass of wine, I probably wouldn't have remembered anything from that evening. It's just that I only had a sip or two out of that glass that it, it was taking effect on me, but not to the point where I was going to literally black out to the point where I wouldn't remember. Right? So, I don't know. I think Cassie and Little Rob are going to be... Hang on, hang on. Is, it, is he going to get a fair trial in New York? This is going to be another big argument the defence are going to put on. He's not going to get a fair trial. This is being blasted all over the papers, all over the internet. So where is he going to get a fair trial? If it's all over the internet, that means everyone in the US is going to know about this case. Unless you've got your head buried in the sand. Some people are like that. Some people don't watch the news. Some people don't follow the news. Some people don't do any of this. Right? I don't watch mainstream media anymore. I don't even read mainstream media newspapers. I don't because they only tell you what they think you should know. Or they tell you what their version of what happened, of what you should know. So
Yes. This, this guy came out before all this came out. Right, so at the time, he did this, he did a big shootout at um, Trump's hotel. Right, he hung a flag over the reception desk, everything. And he was shooting at the cops. And when they got him back to the station, he went, do you know P. Diddy? No, do you know Sean Coombs? And they go, no, he went, P. Diddy. And they went, oh yeah, P. Diddy. And he started talking about how he would, he was hired to have sex with Cassie. He was told how, what to do with Cassie by Diddy and how Diddy was, would just sit there and pleasure himself and he was just their sex slave, well Diddy's sex slave, right? So at the time, they never thought, oh, he's just off his head, you know what I mean? And he gets charged and he gets sent down or whatever, he's in prison, jail at the moment or whatever for the shootout at the Trump Hotel. Now, all this other stuff has come out. So what he said to those cops all those months back or whenever it was, was true. Right? So they've got him as well.
Exactly, the stories. How do you know they are true? I can make a story up. I can sit here and type up a, a, a book and put in all these little stories about this happening and that happening. How do we know they're true? We don't. So, what I'll say on this is I'll leave, finish it there. What I'll say on this is you've got to take what he says with a grain of salt. Right? I believe a lot of his stuff he's saying is right. It's all right, my watch beat telling me to stand up. I've just sat down, I've been standing up for five minutes and I come in here, sit down, and it tells me to stand up. Get out of the hell. Right. Anyway, so, everything you hear, you have to double check. You can't just go by what someone says, you have to double check it. <coughs> right? And that's why we go through all the documents on here. We go through videos and we dissect them videos and everything. Because we we can't trust what one person is saying. So as I said, do your homework. Well, he's mentioned quite a few names in this, in these videos that we've watched. And he's, he's got to be a witness for the feds. He's got to be. Right? He's got to be a witness. He knows so much, apparently. Now, if he isn't a witness, then what is that saying? Is that saying he's not telling the truth? Because I can assure you the feds would be checking everything he told them. There are bits of it that I do believe, like when you said they've got Cassie about the sex trafficking. They only need one person. One weak person to come forward. Credible witness. They've got Cassie. She's got the time, the dates, everything. And they've got that guy who they've got locked up in prison. I'll try and find out more about him. And I've seen that picture and it's and yeah, if I just seen this when it first come out, right? I'll give it a yeah. Right, okay. Right, you're saying this now because you're just a... You just want some fame. 15 minutes fame. But now, this was last year or whenever ago this happened. When you shut up the hotel. Trump's hotel. Why? I don't know. I've not looked into that story. And... But... The video when he's going on about being he's just their sex slave and and all this lot I'm thinking this was said before anything about Diddy came out to the public. This was said and the police at the time didn't take much give it much credit, you know what I mean? So I bet now they are saying, okay, let's talk about this diddy thing. Right? I bet they're talking to him now. And I'll be going, oh, well, now you want to know. Now you want to know. You know what I mean? I told you this when you first arrested me, but oh, no, you didn't believe me then, but now you want to know. Right? But they have got him, they've got Cassie. And they have got a little wrong because he was there as well. He's seeing it coming and going on. He's seeing what was going on. So they've got him as well. I have got the documents on little wrong. Uh, I don't think I'll go through it. Because that's been... A lot of channels have covered all that. So I don't want to go through that. You know what I mean? Unless you want me to. If you do, leave me a comment. So yeah, let's go through those documents. Right, because he's, he has a lot to say. He has a lot to say as well. But, 
It could just be a case of bitterness. He did this work for P. Diddy. P. Diddy didn't pay him the money. You know what I mean? And that's sour grapes. And that's what is the civil cases. It's for the work he done for P. Diddy. And then he brought in this SA and the DRUGS and all that lot. Right? So, but they have got those three people. And I think that guy they first arrested last year or the year before, I've got to look that up. He said all this before Cassie did. Before little Rod did. And the police at the time was taking no notice of him because they just wanted to ask him questions of why he was at the hotel and why he shot up the hotel and all that lot. So, <laughs> even at court, he was, they showed us a bit of his hearing and he kept saying something. And his lawyer turned his mic off. And even the judge said, Oh, you can talk. I will listen. Right? And uh, they said, but I think your lawyer has turned your mic off, which is a good thing, I think. Right? So, you need to watch that video. I might try and find it and do a live on it. I'll just do a video on it and put it out there. But anyway, I'm going to say thank you to everyone for being here tonight. I can turn this music off. Right. Thank you for being here with me today. If you're watching on replay, please give this video a like. As I said, do your own research on what... Write the names down. Write the dates, if it gives any dates out. Write them down, do your own research. Because you can't... He said himself, oh, I've got stories in here. Yes, they're stories. I like to be believed. We don't know, right? And if the FBI don't have him as a witness against Diddy, then that says a lot to me, that they don't even believe what he is say saying is true. So I think he, right, as I said in the title, has he taken a deal? Is he telling the truth? I think, yes, he is telling the truth some, in some cases, some might not be plausible, right? If you watch all the videos he talks about, we haven't even, we just looked at the cherry on the top, really. There's a lot more videos to be seen. And um, so that would be interesting to see if he is a witness. And the other day, last week it was, they went to court, yes. And now everyone was on, under the impression it was a bail hearing. And the cameras weren't in there, but they were giving updates out, putting updates out, of who said what and what said, and everything. And the judge sat there and said, well, I've got this paperwork. I've got no paperwork in front of me for a plea deal, so you will be remanded in jail. Or prison or whatever it is. Right? And I'm sitting there and I'm watching this YouTuber who's airing this court thing and the updates. And I'm thinking... Was this supposed to not be a bail hearing? If so, why didn't they put a bail, the bail papers in the application for bail again? Why wasn't that even talked about? Right? Now, if that was the case and the judges have slipped up, uh, his uh, attorneys have slipped up, I'd be going, you know what, I'm paying you a lot of money. Get the F out. Right, and get some new ones in. Because if that was the case, they slipped up by not putting in a bail hearing. 
the Piper work for Bailey. Uh, and now it's going, they wanted a quick, uh, what did they say? They wanted a quick trial to get to trial quickly. Right? And then they said, but um, these lawyers, the new lawyers have turned around and said, but the, the attorney who made that deal with the other judge, the first judge, spoke wrongly. We need longer because we've got a lot of paperwork to go through. And the judge is going, but you wanted the quick trial. You wanted the speedy trial. Doesn't matter what judge was sitting here at the time, you know what I mean? You wanted the quick trial. And the judge said, I can give you April, March, April or May next year, 2025. And I think that was settled for May. So hopefully by May next year, you never know. You never know, it could be delayed. Because the defence team need longer than that. They've got all this paperwork to get through. And they're not going to get all this paperwork until round about December. So that's only going to give them January, February, March, April, four months to go through all that. All that paperwork, all the evidence that the prosecution have got on him. Everything. It's only giving them four months to get their case put together. So, I can see a delay being on this trial. This judge isn't going to stand for too much, though. So I think they thought by getting a new judge, they're going to get, oh yeah, we've got it here. You know, this judge is not messing about. She is not messing about. She even wants the prosecution to give her more, to show her more of the evidence that they've got by December the 18th. So they've got a few months, a couple of months yet, before they need to get that evidence in. Right? She's not messing about in this case, she, you know what I mean? This isn't a laughing, a walk in the park sort of case. This is serious. And she's not messing about. So he's still in jail, or prison, whatever, jail, is he? And then they go to prison. Right, when in the UK you just go to prison, you sit there until you come up onto, into court, and that's it. And then if you get, say, two years, you'll get, say you, say you are uh, in prison, in jail, like for, two months before you went to court over here, you'll get those two months took off your sentence. Right? Anyway, so, we're looking at next year for the trial. For this. This is going to be an interesting one. I hope to God they have the, the, the at least some one TV station in there, airing this. And if they are, if they do, then we will be watching it live here as it happens. But that's not till next year. So we've got a long way yet. We've got Christmas, uh, well, we're in autumn, but it feels like winter again now. It's gone cold, very cold. So we've got the autumn, we've got the winter, and then we've got the beginning of spring before we get through to this trial. Anyway, so please, if you like what you're seeing here, please like, please give it a share, please leave me a comment. And if you want to, subscribe, and you can now become a member. So if you like what you see, please consider becoming a member. And I will see you all next time. Until then, stay safe, and be good. Hang on, I'm just trying to find something to play out with. I'll play this one. So until then, be good, and stay safe.
No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. Everything I do, so instinctive and so passionate. Every word I move, so descriptive like an adjective. I got a vendetta against people who patented it. Being negative when you should be getting after it. I got facts over facts over tracks, this and that, spitting slow, spitting fast. I could roast, I could gas, think I'm okay at last, but I don't know if that can erase all the past. And the pettiness of reflection of the emptiness, hilarious. You think you're with my time, you're delirious, mysterious, because you are behind a fake exterior, inferior. You know I'll always be a bit superior. Get off of me, this ain't no humble brag. I want you to hear words, you can say them back. I want you to feel free from the chains at last, and to believe in what you got, it was built to last, yeah. Now that I've been put through, I never got anyone's help. I had to do it all myself. I don't ever slow up, no, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play.